Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be with you again this morning as we reflect um, together on the Word of God as well as spending some time praying and lifting uh, issues that God will bring to our attention. I'm going to read today from the letter that Paul writes to the Colossians, chapter 1, reading just a few verses of that chapter, uh, from verse 22 to verse 23. Those will, it will be two verses of Colossians 1, chapter 22, and uh, chap well, chapter 1, verses 22, and verses 23. Listen to the word of God. But now he has reconciled you by Christ, a physical body, through death, to present you holy in his sight, without a blemish, and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you had and that had been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a servant. May the Lord bless to us the reading of his word now and always. Amen. This portion of scripture is, is part of, um, Paul has said to the Colossians that he is praying for them because he, he understand the difficult situation in which they find themselves in. And, and the, the challenge that they had been facing or that they are dealing with is, um, is a challenge of, of faith. You know, faith, when our faith is, is challenged, um, maybe we, we lose track of, of what is happening. We lose track of the fundamentals. We lose track of things that are holding us, that are strengthening us. We lose track of where we need to be going, the direction that God is pointing for us. We lose track as other people come into the scene and distract our attention. And so we, we are not fully concentrated on the task that is before us. And you you can say that because from what Paul had been saying as he prayed for the Colossians, we 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 begin to see that he redirects them to the path that they need to be traveling. He reminds them of what is God doing in their lives. He he reminds them of um the the trajectory that their life has to follow and what they have to be displaying as they follow this path that God is unfolding before them. So he he's reminding them of um, the gospel and the power of the gospel and how the gospel is transforming lives and how the gospel is pulling people from wherever they are, you know, in, in the world, wherever they are, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the distractions that they have. The gospel is pulling them back, wanting to reposition them so that they are focused on the source and on the path that is laid before them. And and sometimes it is that for us we we get distracted by the noises that we hear in the world. 
and we lose focus of the very fundamentals. We lose focus of the promises of God. We lose focus of, of the work that God intends to undertake with us. And then we find ourselves standing in a place doing things by ourselves. And so what is, what is beautiful for me about Paul as he writes to the Colossians and, and the very opening chapter of that, he, he has told them about the gospel, the power of the gospel, and, and how in, in the environment and the surrounding the gospel has been touching, transforming, and bearing food. And then he come to tell them about Christ and who Christ is and what Christ has done. But at the core of what he says about Christ, he, he wants us to understand in a very deep and profound way that Christ mirror to us God himself. And so if we, if we want to understand this deep relationship and sometimes that the world cannot understand is to get these fundamentals correct. Remember he says that Christ, he is the image of the invisible God. So when we are unable, when we cannot see God, we can see him in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the image of God that we cannot see. He is the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. So all the things that we understand when we look at the creation, anything that we can see, that we can lay our eyes on, we need to understand that it has come into being because Christ has ordered and called that into being. And it is not only that Christ has called those things into being. They are actually, you can say, they owe their allegiance to their creator, to the source that brought them into being. They, they, they owe their lives. They owe their existence. They have to show allegiance to him. And so when, when, we, when we understand this beautiful picture of, of Christ that Paul is painting for us, because he, he not only talk about Christ and who Christ is, he now talk also about what Christ has done for us. That we are here because of the grace and the mercy that was shown to us by Christ when he died for our sins at Calvary. So he is reminding the Colossians that you were in huge trouble. Because you did not know life and the source of life. You were doing your own things. You were traveling on your own path. You were masters of, of your own lives. 
you were hugely distracted from seeing and appreciating what God has done and was doing for you. So he says, you need to remember that because Christ has done a huge thing for you. He has brought a reconciliation through his body, through his death. He died in your place so that the demand of God on each and every one of us would have been settled by Christ. And because Christ settled this, he has brought through his death the reconciliation between us and God. And between us, between men and men, and between men and God. And because of this reconciliation, we can now be presented before God as people who are holy in the sight of God, without blemish and free of accusation. Paul wants us to understand that the ground has been settled, that the sin that we have committed, the path that we have deviated from that God has set before us, anything that had been standing between us and God had been removed. And God, when he look at us, he does not see people who can stand, who can stand there and be accused. They are holy. And holy is the, is the important way that we need to understand. Is that holiness is, is that we have been put aside. We are separated from any other use. And we are dedicated solely for the use of God. And I think holy also will then help us to understand the privileged position that we have and the connections that we have and the access that we have. If God will see us as holy, if God will not put any accusation on us, if God does not see any blemish in us, we are in some ways, some ways, perfect beings in his sight. We are allowed access into the very presence of God. We are allowed to talk to him. We are allowed to carry our burdens into him carry the burdens of the world to him. We are allowed to have conversation with him because he knows us, he loves us, he cares deeply for us. He has removed any things that can stand in our way as we reach him. He can listen to us. He can understand our plight. He can, he can understand issues, things that are troubling us. So being holy opens a huge door of opportunities. Open a huge door of access into the very presence of the throne of God. 
it's, it's incredible when you come to think of it. Because sometimes we, we want to look at ourselves, and maybe rightly so, that we see ourselves as sinful, as undeserving, people who might be pushed away by God, people who might even be rejected by Him. Whereas the reality is quite different from a mistake. Because God cares for us deeply. He loves. He is merciful. He is gracious. He pours into our lives incredible amount of grace and love and mercy. And so as he, as he moved, having laid that foundation of the reconciliation that has been effected, and in the actual sense, this reconciliation take us into the very presence of God. You know, it's, it's like the doors of the throne of God are thrown open in front of us. And God is calling us to himself. He's calling us to come closer to where he is. As we see his glory as we feel his presence. So Paul will want us to understand that because of who we are before the throne of God, holy, unblemished, people who are free from accusation, Because of, of our credentials as we come before God, he says there is one thing that we need to keep doing. If you continue in your faith, if you continue in your faith, and maybe, well, let us, let us, in, in a very simplistic way, say this faith is the trust that we have in God. That God will come to and whatever promises and whatever word has fallen out of the mouth of God will come to pass. Our faith then is anchored in our conviction that whatever God has said, that his word will never return empty. And these promises are holding us, are holding us in our lives because whatever we know and we believe about God, we know that it is true and it will come to pass. We know that when God says that I will be with you to the end of times, we know that that is true and there is not a single moment in our lives when we can walk without the presence of God accompanying. When we are told that if we long for healing and God says that by the wounds of Jesus you have been healed, we know it is true. We know that it will happen. We know that we will never ever be sick forever in our lives. That God will come to our rescue. When there are broken relationships, and sometimes we, 
we have deliberately played the part in breaking relationships between people of God, between people that we love, between members of our families, between people that um, we care about. And when God says that, in the ultimate end, the reconciliation will happen. We know that it will. So, whatever we do, whatever the word of God tells us, we live that out and we work at the promises of God because we know that they will ultimately come to pass. And so he says that if you continue walking in this path, your faith is deeply rooted. Where you cling to me, where you hold on to me, you, you stand firm in your faith, you are not shaken, you are strong in your belief, and nothing moves you, nothing distracts you. If you hold on to this, And if you are not moved from the hope that you have, the hope that I am with you, the hope that you know that behind a closed door, I am on the other side. So that any door that you open in your life, you know that I am there. I am there waiting for you, holding your hand. If you hold on to this hope and you hold on to the promises that have been sketched for you in the gospel of Christ. This gospel that you have heard, my story that you have heard so many times in your life. If you hold on to this, there is a huge discovery that will continue to happen in your life. You will find me in, the, in your midst, working with you. You will see me in everything. You will see my glory in each and every walk that you make and in each and everything that you touch. Well, one, one of this powerful uh, cornerstone for me of this beautiful uh, Christology that has been presented to us by Paul as he writes this letter to the, to the Colossians, it's, it's really breaking down the, the divinity of Christ in such a beautiful way and helping us to see how close the relationship between Christ and God. And this relationship that has birthed our relationship with the Godhead. And for me, as I come to, to the conclusion of this, is, of this message, it's how we are drawn into this picture, how we are drawn into this scene that we become part of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
and we are drawn into that community to be part of that community and for God to work it through our lives to touch the lives of others and to bring the message of hope to the world that sometimes they stand in a place of despair and hopelessness. But you, you have an incredible, incredible anointing of God to be conduits of restoration and hope of healing, of reconciliation. Pray that God will bless you. Bless you always, friends. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we, we stand just amazed by your love for us. And Paul just open this, this door for us to see beyond this door the incredible glory of the Father who loves us and who is drawing us into this glory so that we too, we too can experience that glory. He tells us that we have been reconciled by the work of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. Through his death, we have been reconciled to you, Father, and to one another. And then he, he calls us on the basis of what Jesus has done for us. He wants us to understand that our current position cancels what has been there before. Before we were sinners, we were disobedient, we were taking our own way, we were defying the laws and the precepts of, of, of our Father. But now because of this reconciliation, Whatever we have done in the past has been cancelled. And what is in place is that we are viewed as people who are free of accusation. People who are without any blemish. People who are holy. People who are, in fact, separated from any other use. And especially... If the use that the evil one often want to lay claim on us and want to use us to feather his ways and his mission. But now we, we have been separated from any other use to be for the use solely of God who loves us so that we can bring glory through our lives that our lives will shine for you for your glory that we will live lives that transform and touch others so that when others look at us they will want to live for you they will want to be your instrument. Father, we, we think of people who, who are suffering. People, Father, who are still caught in the life. Life that they can't see your glory clearly because of things that are pulling them away from you. 
And sometimes it can be selfishness because we we want to look at ourselves at our at our well being and we we don't care about our fellow men. And sometimes a father it can be that we in that selfishness we become too much opinionated. And so we disregard others. We push them aside. We, we allow the wall of division to fester. And the wounds to continue to bleed. And sometimes, uh, Father, we, we don't realize uh, that the, our bodies are littered with the spots that are filled with pus that needs to be opened so that healing can happen. And Father, sometimes the things that are weighing us is, is the pain that we carry, is the sickness, is the pain of divisions, in our relationships. Pain of concerns that we have about the world and how things continue to unfold. Maybe the threat, challenges and things that are making us uncomfortable. And we forget or even miss to see that we have been called to be reconcilers whenever there is a situation of division. Father, there are others who are carrying pain in their bodies. Maybe just chronic pain. And further terminal illness. It can be challenges of, of COVID. People, Father, who have to go through surgeries. People going through various medical tests today. And in the next days, people longing just to extend and touch your hand. And so today we are thinking of them. We pray, Lord, for marriages that need a reconciliation. When spouses are at loggerheads with one, with one another. Families and the children, Father, that are not seeing eye to eye with their parents or their siblings. We long for for that reconciliation. Places, Father, where um, the workplace is just fueling division and Father attempts for, re for reconciliation just become too difficult. And so, Lord, we, we pray for those situations. We pray for your intervention. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your anointing. We pray, Lord, for, for powers and governments and administrations of the world. We pray, Father, that wherever governments are, are fighting against each other, that there will be ways, Father, that reconciliation can be effected. 
We pray this and we long for this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I am so humbled by, by your company um, as we have spent time praying together. I, I pray that God will, will continue to touch your life, uh, that God will continue to anoint you, that his anointing will be with you, that God will continue to, to journey with you, travel with you in the path that you have taken. That in some ways, because of your obedience and your faithfulness, God will honor your life. God will bless your family. God will bless whatever you do. That is blessing. His grace will rest on you. And receive that blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week and a blessed one, friends. God loves you. Bye.